stuff in between, so uh, kind of stay patient. You'll see nothing happening. Uh, but we'll be in Germany. We'll do an intro to the show, a uh, short little bumper, and then we'll get these guys uh, playing a little bit. We're going to also have... Uh, name that tune. Name that tune. We will be doing uh, during this... No, I'm just... We're not going to do that. But anyway, when we do come back, just have a, bu a bunch of fun, hoop and holler, make a bunch of noise so everybody at home thinks that you're having a good time, even though I can see. At the Walnut Valley Festival. Day uh, three, I think it is. We are on day three, Jer, Ooh. and uh, we're back, and so is Jeremy's mustache, everybody. We and uh, here. we're very proud of, uh, yeah, everybody's so proud of Jeremy's mustache, especially Jeremy. It's growing on me. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. Anyway, today we're going to have a whole bunch of fun. Uh, the rain seems to have stopped, which is nice, and uh, we're going to have a bunch of great music. We're going to have Becky and Ned here today. We're going to have Trey Rob Hensley. and Trey without Rob, so it'll be just Trey. And, and Trey. And Trey and Trey. <laughs> we're going to have Trey and Trey for this show. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun, and we're going to do all that right after this. So stick around. It's going to be the Ozark Music Shop Live, everybody. Go, go, go. Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Cannonball! You good? Yeah, he's saying go, go, go. We don't. And we're back live from Walnut Valley Festival in Winfield, Kansas with two of our favorite folks in the world that are here right now. Before um, we do this, you are distracting me so much. I don't know what you got into, but there is glitter. My Color son got glitter. his face painted with a big dragon, and he had to have it covered in glitter, and then somehow that ended up on me, which I is why thought, I love glitter. I, I thought that was your new makeup earth. that you were going to use. Yeah, thanks so for pointing that out, John. It, it makes my mustache pop. <laughs> anyway, two of our favorite uh, individuals, musicians, and characters. We've known these guys for, for a long time, and they've been uh, return guests on the show, probably some of our most return guests. So they're the ones that return our calls. They're the, yeah, they're the only ones that will return. We <laughs> call them return guests because <laughs> they return why. our calls. Hey, you want to come back and do another episode? Ned nope. always says, I can't hear you. I have a banana in my ear. Uh, hey. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, very excited to have these guys here today. They're going to be playing a couple songs. We're really excited about it. I keep saying, we're, we keep saying we're really excited, but we actually are you excited tell. about it. It's I really, got glitter on my face. Are you? I really mean I am. <laughs> hey, everybody watching, Megan, welcome. It is Becky and Ned. <laughs>
guys. That's all. Awesome. That was really, really good. Believe it or not, that was actually really good. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, John. Strange things have happened. Yeah. yeah. No, these are these really are some of our best friends. We've been playing music together. We've had a great time, and you guys have been playing a while. A while now. We just said what was your first year? 2015 is when I started the band, and and Ned's been in the band that entire time. I'm the only one that hadn't quit. This is true. He's the <laughs> only one who hasn't quit yet. I got yet, no place so. else to go. <laughs> I got no place else. Chris See? Jones already hired somebody new. I <laughs> the thing I, I love about this duo right here is these are two of the biggest uh, weirdos that I know. <laughs> and, and I, I know, I know. I appreciate they're actually, that. That's a compliment. I know to it me. is. It's absolutely. And I, I am also a weirdo. I'm not trying to say it as an insult, but, but this you guys two take is it to like, another level. Yeah, you guys take it to an absolutely Thank another you. level. And working together as two extreme weirdos is uh, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I really that should be the name of the new band, yeah. but it's just two a duet. Extreme weirdos. Two extreme weirdos. Yeah, when we go out as a duo, we call it all the banjos because we usually take five or six banjos with us in addition to the fiddle and the guitar. And, um, but maybe we should change it to the some all the, the weirdos, weirdos. All the weirdos. Yeah, two all the weirdos. Maniacs. Yeah. Ned and Becky, two extreme weirdos. <laughs> anyway, uh, both of them extremely talented. Uh, you have been hearing uh, Ned's voice on uh, Bluegrass Radio for quite some time. Uh, and it's one of the voices of Sirius, Sirius XM yes. that we grew up watching and listening to. Well, not watching so much, just well, listening to. I, I've watched the radio many times. <laughs> <laughs> it, it changes. You know, different words show up, you know, on the front of your radio. It's kind of a, actually. I think uh, I am in my 20th year at uh, at Sirius XM next year. Uh, yeah. yeah, it'll be 20, 20 I didn't years. Know, I didn't know they had satellites back then. Yeah, I know. I know. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and Becky has been uh, I've, around. We have been I've hanging around for, for a long time. I've known y'all for over 20 years. Way over Most 20 years. Most of our young lives. We were kids together. Yeah. Um, we still act like kids together. We get together and do all the dumb things that we used to do when we were kids. But uh, absolutely amazing songwriter as well as a great singer and an amazing fiddle player, all in one package, and uh, runs the Becky Buller Band with Ned, and then you guys have been doing this duo thing on top of that, which is really, really cool. We have. We started that during the pandemic, and it's been really fun because our band can't go all the time. A couple of the guys have day jobs, and so we're able to take some gigs that, you know, that we might not otherwise be able to take with the entire band, and it's been fun. It, it's, it, it stretches us. It makes us work harder. You know, because you have to, you just have to work harder. Mostly because you have to carry more banjos. Right, Usually exactly. I just bring one. <laughs> when we play together, it's like five of them. It's... But it gives us an opportunity, like, for me to tell stories about the songs and sing songs that uh, other people have recorded of mine. The Chapmans have recorded a song or two of mine, which I think is absolutely awesome. Thank you again I'm for sorry. that. I apologize for doing <laughs> no, that. No, I'm so glad you did. It, made, it was, it really, really is... Um, I, I'm, I'm honored. Thank well, you. We're honored. Uh, we're absolutely. And also, uh, if you guys have not seen, uh, like I said, past guests of the Ozark Music Shop been in here. We've done some really fun stuff together. We did some game shows, all that. So if you've never seen those episodes, come on back and check those as well. Those were a blast, weren't Thank they? Thank you. Oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, we're going to get you to do another tune. I know you want to switch instruments here. Let me here, trade with and you. And I will uh, do this and not drop your stuff right. here. But, speaking uh, of songs that other people have recorded of mine, this is one that I wrote with our mutual friend, Alan Bartram, yes. of the Traveling McCurries and the Del McCurry Band. I think that's a good time to point out also that our first two guests of our podcast, we have a podcast called The Acoustic Shop Knows People. You check it out. We just released one today with Tim O'Brien. But our first two guests were Alan Bartram and Becky Buller. So that is absolutely that the truth. very fitting. So there you go. So, anyway, we're going to get them to do you another song. She'll tell you all about it. But everybody, get another big hand for Becky and Ned here. So everybody knows about John Henry, the steel-driving man, right? Okay. But what the, we don't hear, often hear about the shaker, the guy that was holding that little bitty piece of steel that John Henry was driving that nine-pound hammer Why do they call at. that guy the shaker, you wonder? Well, <laughs> I, well, you had to have... <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so he, this is a song about him. And uh, it was on the Traveling Mercury's self-titled album that won a Grammy a few years back. So, very... Have they, let you, have they let you see the Grammy? That they, they have not with? let me see the Grammy. Yeah, they didn't let you touch I it can't get Alan on the phone to write another song either. I don't know why. Nobody know me. 
y'all heard of him he left here a legend after dying at Big Ben Cause we always was a team Got my nerves are still He never beat Burley's machine I ate the red shell rock dust Now it's sticking to my lungs Burying me inside out Can't catch a breath, son Back when I could sing, we keep the gang in time. Build a whole lot further when he raised his voice with mine. You swing that hammer, John. I'll hold the drill. I'll be your shaker, John. You know, always will. Careful with that hammer, John. My life is in your hands if we don't make it. John, I'll meet you over in the promised land. Big city dandy showed up to take our pay. A week clear in a week, he claimed he'd do in a day. That drill sure was a demon A lot of noise, a lot of steam And thought straight away It weren't no match for John and me I'm a one say captain Let us have a go We went up against it The rest you know I'll meet you over in the promised
played bass for which country female vocalist in the 1940s? Becky Nose, Becky Nose, Becky Nose, Becky Nose. Can I just Becky say Lee. Hey, Come on. <laughs> Fancy Klein. Ah! <laughs> Molly O'Day. Right. Focus, you can do this too. Bitch. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop Pop Quiz. We are here with a special guest, Becky Buller Band. All right. Who's ready for some pop quizzing? Woo! I am. Woo! I am. I'm ready. Pop it to me. Got this. Play the, play the theme song, please. Our first round is bluegrass questions. What? And they are worth one point each. <laughs> what is? No, oh, sorry. No, I'm asking the question. Too. Okay. The All ultimate right. banjo lick. No. No. <clears throat> He's those guys. That's not on my paper. Here we go. All right. First question. The correct name of Ralph Stanley's band is a. <laughs> 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 I think you have to wait for I think all you got to put a letter. I think you got to wait for no, all the multiple this choice. Is this, is, this is multiple choice. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. She's going, she's going full time. Time out. Time out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll be back after this message. <laughs> Let me tell you about Barbasol. Barbasol. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, a face so smooth, she'll touch your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now for the. Now for the uh, answers. So let's set some ground rules. He's gonna he's gonna give some uh, multiple choice multiple choice options and then ding. Thank you. All right. Read the question again, please, sir. All right. The question was: the correct name of Ralph Stanley's band was A. Ralph Stanley and the Clinch Mountain Boys, B. Ralph Stanley and the Clinch Mountain Clan. C, Ralph Stanley and the Clinch River Breeder Reactors. Hmm. I like that one. Or Ralph Stanley and the Weekend. <laughs> now you ding. <laughs> Becky. <laughs> Give us an answer now. Ralph Stanley and the Clinch Mountain Boys. All right. St no, no, I saw, I saw this. Oh, brother, we're out there. It is definitely the Clinch Mountain Clan. Uh -huh. I saw no, he had, no. a, had a hood and a hole. Oh. Short stint where Ralph Stanley toured with The Weeknd. Oh, it was actually the Clint Brown Boys. Okay, point to Becky Muller. <laughs> the little cabin home on the hill is a real place in Western Kentucky. <laughs> is a euphemism for a house of ill repute, which is also a euphemism. <laughs> is a song co-written and recorded by Bill Monroe and Lester Flat. D is a song co-written by Bill Monroe and Lester Fatt, but never recorded until Sturgill Simpson put it on his Cut and Grass Volume 2 album with a forced verse and a bridge added. Wow, that last answer seemed pretty... <laughs> pretty, pretty forced. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh, it was a, a song that was recorded and written by, uh, C. But yeah, was it C? Yeah, C. Bill Monroe and Lester right. Flatt. You guys are not quick on the buttons. You know? No, everybody's scared to hit it after a second. Next time you might want to nail these things down. What was the answer? <laughs> the answer is C, a song go written and recorded yeah. by Bill Nero and Lester Flatt. There you go. All right, these will get better, guys. Don't worry. All right. We're ready for it. Number three. Again, well, bluegrass three. question, worth one point. Get your buzzers ready. Fox on the Run was written and first recorded by A, the Love and Spoonful. B, Manfred Mann. C, Bill Emerson and Cliff Waldron. D, Tom T. Hall. Or E, Lawrence Welk. Oh, that would be John, just by a buzz. Tom T. Hall. No, Becky Fuller. Manfred Mann. No. C, no. 
kidding. Try again. <laughs> What's our E? Would we like the answers again? All of the above. Yes. Wait a minute. The Love and Spoonful, Manfred Men, Bill Emerson and Criff Walton. Bill Emerson, I said that. Tom T and, and Lawrence Welk would be D. John already buzzed. What, John, what's your answer? Love and Spoonful. No. <laughs> Come to y'all. No. Two guys didn't Lawrence see. Will. That's all. Lawrence Welk. Lawrence Welk, get in. <laughs> one point for Becky Boyle. What? One? No, that's E. What? There's an E? Man, when did, so Man for Man did it after Lawrence Welk? Must be. What? I'm not going to argue. His paper I'm says not it's right. So it's right. I yeah. will not argue with the internet. All right, we'll, we'll go to the, uh, the uh, we'll confirm. judges and we'll confirm that. <gasps> You got the point anyway, Becky. I don't know why you're complaining. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wildest the snort I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. The principal. All right, guys. Number four. Four. We ready? Get your hands on the buzzers. Right, I'm ready. Yes. Correctly complete the following line from the song, You Don't Know My Mind, Honey, You Don't Know My Mind, A, or anybody else's mind for that matter, B, I'm lonesome all the time, C, You've climbed up the wrong pine. I like that one. D, and I don't know my mind. Does anybody else here know my mind? <laughs> <laughs> or E, <laughs> the plans have made... I'll be buff. The plans we made have gone astray. <laughs> that was me. Was it you? You don't know my mind. I'm lonesome all the time. That was B. Jeremy gets a point. What? Jeremy got him. This is the first time he's ever got anything right. Everybody, <laughs> ever. Jeremy, ever. Good. All right. Thank you, man. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> you guys ready for this? Ready. It's getting yeah. harder. Number five. Oh, this is good. Before Mac Wiseman played with Lester Flat and Bill Monroe, or Flat and Scruggs and Bill Monroe, sorry, he played bass for which country female vocalist in the 1940s? Becky knows, Becky knows, Becky knows. Can I just Becky say, Becky just say it? Come on. <laughs> Fancy Klein. <laughs> she, Molly O'Day. Can I just say it? Sandra Day O'Connor. Sandra Day O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Becky. Molly O'Day. Yeah. No, it's Woo. definitely Sinead O'Connor. Yay. I thought it was Sandra Day Who knew? I think, wow. I think Becky knew that one. Wow. <laughs> what gave you that idea? Are you entertained? <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> Give her a trampoline. Can we play poker with her, please? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a good hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's me! Four races! <laughs> We're moving into country trivia, guys. Are we ready? What country? Ooh. Country. Uh, the U.S. of A. of... Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Of a natural... No, no. Formerly. Sorry. <laughs> I have to go with what's written on the paper, Ned, and it is country. All right. All right. Okay. Number six, guys. Which classic country music star was known as the storyteller? A. Hold on, hold James on, K. hold on. My hand's broken. <laughs> he was the bluegrass storyteller. Oh. A. Wrong Don country. Williams. B. Tom T. Hall. C. Willie Nelson. Or D. Chris Christopher. Oh, Jeremy got it. Tom T. Hall. Yes. Do you have any questions about chicken? <laughs> no, I can make one up though. Wes knows lots about Deep fried chicken. <laughs> what? Country fried. What version of poultry is finger looking good? <laughs> what are the seven secret ingredients? I think it's 13. <laughs> Look at 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Which Waylon Jennings hit song has the subtitle Back to the Basics of Love? A. Luke and Bach, Texas. B, good hearted woman. C, rainy day woman. Or D, sweet dream woman. John, Luke and Bach, Texas. You're right. Luke and Bach, Texas. With Willie, Waylon, and, and the boys. Yes, there it is. Way to go, guys. Back to the basics of. <laughs> Focus, you can do this, Jeremy. Which, <laughs> which country music queen had her first hit with Delta Ronda Dawn Vincent. at the Vincent. age of D 13? Oh. You gotta wait for the answer. She's allowed to answer now. Take your time. All right. Over. I'll give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since you're the guest, you get it. <laughs> there are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I was going to say that too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? There are no rules. All right. <laughs> Pearl buttons. All right. Batman. <laughs> Go ahead and read it while he's playing. Uh, I was enjoying the intermission. All right. Number nine. The opening narrative of Chris Christopherson's To the Beat of To Beat the Devil is dedicated to which famous country star? A. Johnny Cash. B. George Jones. C. Merle Haggard. Or D. Johnny Paycheck. Johnny Cash. Jerry gets it. I didn't know the answer, but I just guessed. He just guessed. <laughs> he, he had some devils. I thought you were going to say Yeah, Johnny Chris Paycheck. and him were good friends, so they. Uh, Coolest name ever. They're fighting Johnny devils. <laughs> Old Johnny Paycheck. Oh. <laughs> All right, number 10. Guys, number you ready 10. for this? It's getting hard. It is. To focus. So hard. <laughs> Which star is missing from the group composed of Wailing Jennings, Willie Nelson, and Tom Paul Glazer? A, Kenny Rogers, B, Dottie West, C, Dolly Parton, or D, Jesse Coulter? I'm going to go with Jesse Coulter. D, it is. Way to go, Johnny. Thank that you. Was Thank shot you. in the dark, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I'm sweating like crazy over here, guys. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> All right, guys. This is making me nervous. When I get to the next page, points are doubled. Ooh. Hold on. Ooh. Hold on. Ooh. The, first, the first page has meant nothing. <laughs> As Samuel Jackson says, hold on to your butts. <laughs> Which country classic spent three weeks as a number one hit in the British charts in May 1975? A, Stand By Your Man. B, King of the Road. C, He'll Have to Go. Or D, Distant Runs. Jeremy? King of the Road. No. A. A, Stand By Your Man. It is. Ho! <laughs> Only 30 hey, seconds. Okay. Okay. Give it all your again. love I'm to right. just one man. <laughs> <laughs> but if you love him. <laughs> Why are we here? here? I didn't Why remind you. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. You're Be Tanya? proud of him. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right. Last three All questions, right. guys. Double All the points. Right. Keep going, going, buddy. Double, Double the, the points. Fun. Double the points. All right. Number 12. <laughs> Who is credited as being the original king of Western Swing? Oh, this is me, a good me, one. Me, me. No, that is not you. Oh. Original. Not you. You're oh, not on you. Oh, right. Not self-proclaimed. Yeah. A, Spade Cooley. B, Milton Brown. C, Bob Wills. Or D, Roy Clark. John? Bob Wills. No! Wrong! Jeremy! Cooley! Spade Cooley. I, I listen he to cocaine that. and white rhinestones. <laughs> yes. He also oh. murdered his wife. <laughs> he also murdered his wife. He said that with the biggest mouth. <laughs> you ever seen anybody proud he also tell a story? <laughs> he also tortured and murdered his wife. <laughs> yeah, listen to that. That's <laughs> brutal. In front That's of his podcast. But also, he's tied to a chair. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, he got that. away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Our crew is officially a gas. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have to watch Co him. Cocaine and rhinestones. Listen to that episode. It's disturbing. <laughs> He's a bad man. Bad, bad man. Apparently. But <laughs> the king of Western <laughs> Swing. Right. All right. The original king. You guys got a lot of catching up to do. Jeremy's killing it over yeah. here. Wow. I think he's reading over my shoulder. Uh, no, I knew. I listened to Cocaine right. and Rhinestone. It has all his answers. <laughs> <laughs> Number thirteen. Which huge hit for Jim Reeves was released? In 1966, two years after his tragic death. And one year after I was born. Nobody cares. That wasn't in the question. Nobody cares. Throw that in there. Thanks for the aside. Hey. <laughs> focus, Ned. Focus. A. He'll have to go. B. Four walls. C. I love you because. Or D. Distant drums. John. Distant drums. D it is. He got a point. He got double the points. That's two points. If you're keeping track. Uh oh. I'm tied. I want to recount. Recount. 
we have a tie so right here, guys. <laughs> All right, last question brings it down. Five points each. Get ready. You guys ready? I'm ready. <laughs> this is for real, guys. This is this is all the marbles. <laughs> what song report, recorded by Tanya Tucker when she was 15 was banned from radio and was not allowed to be played on rodeos and country shows? A. The man that turned my mama on. Who? B. Would you lay with me? C, your good girl's going to go bad. Or D, if you touch me, you've got to love me. I want that run again. A little unsettled by all, all right. of them. <laughs> As she was 15, you said? A bit uncomfortable. Yeah, there you go. Run that by me. Guess all it's right. in the a, end of the tie. Again, A, a man that turned my mama on. The man that turned my mama on. B, would you lay with me in a field of stones? C, your good girl is going to go bad. Or D, if you touch me, you've got to love me. Jeremy? Your good girl's gone, going to go bad. Oh. John, would you lay with me in a field of stones? That's correct. <laughs> Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. <laughs> is there one more question? Thank you. No, that is it. That was it? Oh, okay. A big rainbow trout pillow. <laughs> yes, yes, take it. <laughs> it's you yours. Play guitar in this band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is, there you have it, folks. The acoustic shop pop quiz. We had fun. We clapped. We cried. We cried. We answered questions. We did. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See ya. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ozark Music Shop Live. We are back here at uh, Winfield, Kansas, at the Walnut Valley Festival. While number you guys 51. Were, this is number 51. While you guys were watching that video, whatever it happened to be, I couldn't see it. Uh, it I'm sure it was wonderful. We were here, right here, having a great time. We were entertaining the yeah, audience. We were playing jam songs. session. We had a jam session. It was really good. We were all admiring Jeremy's glitter. It was really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, so the now... Glitter <laughs> We have, a, we have a buddy of here that is a fantastic guitar player, great singer. I am actually a huge, huge fan. I mean, he's already a great guitar player, but a huge, huge fan of his singing. I really... Makes you mad. He can yeah, get it both. does. And then I heard him play a mandolin on his Facebook a few days ago. I, bet, like, I bet that was also I don't also like really that good. fella. I don't like that guy either. <laughs> but uh, normally tours with uh, Rob Ikes, who's another one of those guys that plays so good, you don't like him either. Great and, fella. Uh, but he's we not love feeling him. well right now. But he's, he's not feeling so well right now. So we got, uh, we got Trey to do it. And Anyway, and uh, sorry, buddy, but you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to suffer through it. Hey, we are here. really really glad to have him here on the show, and I know you guys are gonna love it as well. He's gonna do a couple songs for you, uh, solo. So. Do a song, and then we're gonna interview him a little bit, and yeah. then come back and do another one. And yeah, jam. that's exactly how we're gonna do it. So, how about another hand here for Trey Hensley right here? Thank you. Always looking for a place to hang my hat I never know in which direction I might find me at I've been traveling every day since I was born Just looking for some shelter from a never-ending storm I've crossed over these United States I seldom make new friends along the way Never staying long enough to say hello just chasing both ends of my rainbow Well this morning came as a surprise After all the hell I've raised the last few lonely nights I've been burning all my candles at both ends Just wondering when this chapter stops and a brand new one begins Well Montana's really nice this time of year Well anywhere is better than right here I'll ride a plane wherever it may go While I chase both ends of my rainbow 
I keep playing on the promises and chasing after dreams Knowing that reality is better than it seems I'll find my way, won't sacrifice my soul While I chase both ends of my rainbow Pockets are all full of cigarettes My money's blown, my whiskey's gone And I'm full of regrets And I'm standing on this highway looking out With my guitar and my friendly smile Hit your eye, no doubt My horizon is just over this hill And I know I'll never, ever get my fill I'll keep playing every song that I know while I chase both ends of my rainbow I keep hanging on to promises and chasing after dreams Knowing that reality is better than it seems I'll find my way, won't sacrifice my soul While I chase both ends of my rainbow Yeah, I'll find my way, won't sacrifice my soul While I chase both ends of my rainbow everybody. Uh, seriously, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he's kind of a good guitar player. Uh, <laughs> and singer. <laughs> oh, man. No, I've been admiring this guy for a while. He was actually on the very first episode of the Ozark Music Shop. Did you know it was the first episode? I didn't know it was the first episode. It was yeah. the very first one that oh, we... Oh, that's cool. Uh, the store still, had just still, opened, I think, when we got you guys yeah. cornered into a room. and That's right. And then he was I on the that. intro for every episode that season. Uh, you guys were both <laughs> on there, so it was really cool. No, I've uh, been admiring this guy for a long time. Uh, you started at a very, very young age uh, and yeah. actually made your, like, an Opry debut, like, super young age. What, what yeah. was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started started playing when I was ten. I got a guitar and at, well, I saw Jimmy Martin at a bluegrass festival, and uh, him and Charlie Waller. And before that, I mean, I'd seen a lot of play, people strum a guitar. Sure. But that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody. It's like, okay, I want to do that for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the gear on hook. So far, so good. You know? Yeah, yeah, but, that's uh, good. Yeah. That sort of lit a fire, and I started playing when I was ten. And yeah, I met Marty Stewart. Uh, after I'd been playing about six months. Really? And uh, and I played him a couple songs at some gig he was playing, just backstage, you know. And he had me come up and play with him that night. And then uh, the songs I played were Carter family tunes that I'd learned from uh, this Flatt and Scruggs album called uh, Flatt and Scruggs Play the Famous Songs of the Carter Family. And so there's a lot of Earl Scruggs guitar licks. Yep. And Earl was my first, like, real guitar hero that I tried to learn all of his stuff. And, and uh, so Marty recognized that and those licks and and he so he had me play the opry with him and earl scruggs about six months after that so uh, and that's one of the cool things about uh again if you guys are not following trey on social media he's done a lot of cool posts he, he gets on you're doing a live show he's still doing the live show uh, like request shows when, okay. I'm, yeah. <laughs> when i'm around when he wants to be live yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he's living it's but, all ai these days but it's really really cool because he's got so many different techniques and styles there's different styles of music he's into uh you know sometimes you get the electric stuff out and, go yeah. and do crazy stuff with that um, but it's always really, really good stuff and a great singing and playing at the same time. Which remind me, I've got a friend at home that says you have to have these hats. They're in my truck. So All right. Got, I, I, you're, I'm, I, I don't know why that hit me just now, but I, in Could the middle of an dead. interview, I'm going to bring that up. So, Mike, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. I told him I've got them. I hope it's those uh, big foam cowboy hats. I, I hope so, too. <laughs> I don't Number know. Look in a box. No, it's a Jimmy Martin. <laughs> yes. Great. Rodeo hat. Yeah. I, I actually, the first time I got to hear your stuff was because of Rob. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Rob. Yeah. And he goes, hey, John, I'm getting ready to start this new thing. 
I don't know if you've heard this guy. And I said, no, I haven't. And he's like, so he handed me this like demo, I think, of you guys working on some material. Oh, yeah. and it's like, he's an amazing singer. He's a great player. You're going to love this. And, and of course I did. So and then right. you signed uh, uh, with Compass Records and started doing your stuff. And now you've been touring with Rob for what? It's going on 10 years 10 now. Years? 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, yeah. Yeah, right. that makes right sense. Right when we opened the store. Yeah. 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 yeah so it's well. awesome. And my, my question was, all right, so as a young guitar player, obviously you picked up the guitar. When did this voice come in? Like, when were you 10 and had this deep, low end voice? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any Trey Hensley before puberty? Yeah. 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 There, unfortunately, there are about three CDs that I did before I was uh, singing. Before, and, uh, before, before I started actually singing. I mean, I, I always sang, and uh, my, I kind of got, you know, I was always into, like, Hank Williams and George Jones and, and that kind of that country kind of stuff, and so that I think trying to mimic those people. But, but when I was about a, a year or so after I played the Opry, I got to meet Johnny Cash, and I played with him on some stuff. That's awesome. And I think I really tried to mimic him for a while because I was just so inspired being around him. And and so uh, uh, yeah, I think once it, I don't know. It, I don't smoke cigarettes, but... Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever introduce yourself as the man in black? Just, uh, yeah, just for the I, well, I was, that's what I was going to do today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you ever took your mantle and carved a cross into it or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right, I should do that. Marty yeah. Stewart thing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, that's awesome that you've gotten to play with some of these idols at such an early age. I'm sure that had some kind of influence on you really taking this beyond where, where a lot of young players kind of stop, having some of that interaction with some of your heroes. Yeah, it was definitely a big thing. I mean, it was just... Yeah, I mean, and bluegrass and, and country music and acoustic music especially is great for that because you know I got a couple months after I started playing guitar I got to meet Charlie Waller and it was you know just just he was at a bluegrass festival walking around yeah and it's like oh, okay that that doesn't happen in every kind of music so that's that's what's really cool about it is cool. this music you know yeah. it's it's everybody's kind of you know really they help everybody else, you know. It's, we're all kind of in the same boat together, and, and I, think like that's the great, music. I think that's yeah. the great thing with those early guys that's kind of started that trend. Is then it kind of makes people like you now that are coming up. You're kind of that hero for, for these young guys, and you feel that that sense of obligation, not obligation, but you know, like that's kind of become a tradition of being accessible, helping young people along, yeah. keeping the music going by being that person that they can look up to and and actually interact with and not think, man, my hero wasn't very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did. Everybody knows. Uh, I was not nice to anybody. Well, luckily, John wasn't a hero to very many people, I so I didn't, didn't have stop, anybody to, to didn't be stop mean to. Uh, <laughs> he planned on being a jerk. If any kid ever looked up to him, go learn. I wanted kid. that to happen. No. Oh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty nice, isn't now, it? That's nice. Yeah, yeah, I just takes it out of my facial hair. Anyway. <laughs> No, we're going to get Trey to do uh, another tune here, and then we're going to kind of come out and end it all together and uh, maybe do another jam session deal. But uh, I want you all to hear another great song, so make him welcome one more time. It's Trey Hensley right here, everybody. Well, i got to say, I mean, a, a big thank you to the Chapmans because they're, they're some of my favorite pickers, and it's, uh, it's great to hang out with them and pick any time. So thanks for... Let me come by and play a few. I figured I'd play a new song that I've never played it live before, but we're going to record it in a couple months, so I better start learning it. But I wrote this one. Uh, wrote this one with a friend of mine in East Tennessee. I got a 68 Camaro with four on the floor A rebuilt carburetor, man, that thing will roar Well, it's a real head turner, it can fly and it can cruise It can do dang near anything But it can't outrun the blues Well, I've been to foreign countries and across all 50 states I've met dignitaries and I've stamped license plates well, I'm no stranger to the highway going anywhere I please But one thing I've come to know Is I can't outrun the blues I feel them hiding in the darkness and shining in the light Every minute, every hour, they ain't far out of sight well, I thought I could get past them, but no matter what I do, I can't outrun the blues.
Well, sometimes I think I'm haunted and feeling spirits from beyond. They show up to remind me of all that I've done wrong. And just when I think I shake them, your memory blows a fuse. It'll hold me down forever. As I can't outrun the blues. Feel them hiding in the darkness and shining in the light Every minute, every hour, they ain't far out of sight Well, I thought I could get past them, but no matter what I do I can't outrun the blues No, I thought I could get past them, but no matter what I do I can't outrun the blues the famous breed love headstock huh how do you think they came up with that i heard that there was an accident when they're making the first prototype <laughs> no from what i understand it was designed to double as a weapon just in case truth is, this is actually scientifically designed to make a better sounding guitar. The angle of these strings from the nut to the tuning pegs is a much straighter shot, making sure that it does not get caught and making so it has better stability and better tuning. Maybe we're all right. What? What? Hey everybody, we are here at the Ozark Music Shop, live here at the Walnut Valley Festival. We're laughing because Jason did this countdown and did like he does, this. Yeah, he's, like, it was in uh, weird like countdown he did, five, he did the four, Spock thing, I think. And I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, we're back here and uh, we've had a great time with you all. I hope you guys have had a good time. Everybody having a good time here today? Good. Yeah. Good. Before we get out of here, I do want to thank all of our sponsors who have been making the Ozark Music Shop live and are doing it all year long. We're going to be doing more festivals. Uh, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. Whatever you're watching it on right now, make sure to uh, do that. Uh, our lead sponsor for the entire year is actually the Walnut Va Valley Festival uh, here in Winfield, Kansas. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Also, I want to thank Bourgeois Guitars, uh, Fishman Guitars. Fishman uh, uh, pickups and amps. Yeah, well, Fishman pickups and amps. That's what I meant for your guitar. Of course. <laughs> or mandolins or fiddles or banjos. Nobody cares about banjos or fiddles. We do not want them amplified. Yeah. Please do not do that. <laughs> Diderio strings Yay. and accessories, as well as Atkin Guitars, Thompson Guitars, Bedell Guitars, Boucher Guitars, Eastman Mandolins and Guitars, and, of course, Peterson Strobo Tuners. And last but not least, uh, ear trumpet microphones for uh, all their help all year long for the channel as well as live. And of course, our best sponsor yet, Ned Lubarecki, who's gonna, we're gonna send him a bill in the mail. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. So anyway, we're gonna do one more tune and get on out of here. I think Becky has decided on an old standard here called 
the Blue Knight. And uh, thank you all so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you all, Natalie Brecky, 